unsolved. The John Bonet Ramsey case. Real ransom notes. All right, our first example is Adolf. Not a popular name nowadays. Age 44, from Golden, Colorado, in Jefferson County. So here's our first sample ransom note. And you can see that it was mailed and it was typed. But as we read the ransom note, it has many similarities to the Ramsey case. Your husband has been kidnapped. Call the police or FBI, he dies. Cooperate, he lives. Ransom, $200,000. In tens and $300,000 in twenties, there will be no negotiating. Bills, used, non-consecutive, unrecorded, unmarked. Warning, we will know if you call the police or record the serial numbers. Yeah, right. Directions. Place money in this letter and envelope in one suitcase or bag. Have two men with the car ready to make the delivery. When all set, advertise a tractor for sale in Denver Post, Section 69. Sign at King Ranch, Fort Lupton. Wait at NA94455 for instructions after ad appears. Deliver immediately after receiving call. Any delay will be regarded as a stall to set up a stakeout. Understand this, Adolf's life is in your hands. We have no desire to commit murder. All we want is that money. If you follow the instructions, he will be released unharmed within 48 hours after the money is received. So I'm going to hold off before I talk about similarities and differences and move on to the next ransom note. January 7th, 1946 was the first day of school after Christmas vacation. Helen first woke her 11-year-old daughter, Betty, and then went to Suzanne's room. My mother screamed and she called for my dad. Where's Suzanne? Someone entered the house by climbing a ladder to Suzanne's bedroom. A $20,000 ransom note was left behind. Police determined she had been awakened by the intruder who strangled her. She was taken to the basement of a nearby building. This is the older 11-year-old sister. It was terrifying. I was afraid to be away from my parents. I went to school in a police car. A policeman stayed in my house. To this day, I have to have a bedroom door open. After arresting this sicko, police determined his fingerprints matched those on the ransom note. So this ransom note looks a little different. Get $20,000 ready and wait for word. Do not notify FBI or police. Bills in 50s. So this case is similar to the John Bonet Ramsey case, but the ransom note is nothing like the ransom note in the John Bonet Ramsey case. Now this ransom note is two-paged and it's typed, and it's just about the same length as the John Bonet ransom note. And it involved two gentlemen that did the kidnapping. And it comes with further instructions. So here's a clear copy of the first page. And I'm only going to cover the first page. Dear Sir, 
As you no doubt know by this time, your son has been kidnapped. Allow us to assure you that he is at present well and safe. You need fear no physical harm for him, provided you live up carefully to the following instructions and such others as you will receive by future communications. Should you, however, disobey any of our instructions even slightly, his death will be the penalty. Number one, for obvious reasons, make absolutely no attempt to communicate with either the police authorities or any private agency. Should you already have communicated with the police, allow them to continue their investigations, but do not mention this letter. 2. Secure before noon today $10,000. This money must be composed entirely of old bills of the following denominations. $2,000 in $20 bills, $8,000 in $50 bills. The money must be old. Any attempt to include new or marked bills will render the entire venture futile. Now this kidnapping was done right out of the hospital just a few days after the child was born. And it strikes me funny, even though it's not funny. The San Francisco Police Department released a description of the child. Robert Marcus is four days old, 19, 19 inches in length, and weighs six pounds, six and a half ounces. He has a pink complexion and a small amount of brown fuzzy hair. A reward of $5,000 has been offered by the doctor for Robert's safe return. Newspapers published a formula recommended by Dr. Marcus so the kidnapper would know how to feed him. Dr. Marcus, we have your baby boy. Don't worry, he is in fine health and is being taken good care of. We want $5,000 in five, 10, and 20 denominations, and the bills are to be unmarked. Put the money at the corner of 38th Avenue in San Juan in Oakland at the northwest corner, planks. Below is a diagram. Have the money there by 8 a.m. Thursday. If you inform any law enforcement agency, your son will be done away with. Also, if I'm picked up by police while picking up the ransom, my partner will do away with your son, as we have set a deadline for my arrival back. After we receive ransom, under the above conditions, we will leave your baby in some Oakland church with instructions attached as to where to return him. Good luck, the kidnapper. So when there's good news, I should report it. And so little baby Robert Marcus was safely returned. And I believe this is his graduation high school photo. Now this case is insane. Just when you would think it couldn't get any worse. These three guys kidnapped a whole school bus of children and then they moved them over into a van and then they took them to an isolated place and moved them into a trailer and then buried the trailer underground. And so to give you the good news right off the bat on this one, the bus driver was able to dig his way out and everyone escaped and the kidnappers were caught. UR bus has been kidnapped. Put two and a half million dollars in each of the suitcases. Use old bills. Have ready at the Oakland police station. Further instructions pending until 10.05 p.m. We are Bielisbu, 10.05 Sunday. Take suitcases to Oakland International Airport. 
Have CHP plane pick up and transfer same at a thousand feet above ground level to Santa Cruz. Direct then follow Highway 17 back to Oakland International. Speed should be about 120 miles per hour ground speed. Rest of message in five minutes. Call something red at other something home. Fred calls and delivers final message. So this was a rough draft. It wasn't the actual ransom note. And so that's why it kind of ends like that. Mr. Sinatra, your son is all right. You will get him back if you cooperate. The price is $200,000 in 5, 10, and 20s. Mr. Lawford is to deliver the money. Tonight he must be at Venice Boulevard at the end of it, parked next to phone booth in front of Lifeguard or Coast Guard Station at 12 p.m. December 11th night and has money with him he will be instructed from there this note must be with him mr lawford call mr sinatra at mapus hotel in reno tell him to call you back on untaped it's supposed to be tapped phone tell him to play it cool because we have a spy So if he don't cooperate, Junior gets a 45 slug in his head. So in the Adolf case, the kidnappers kidnapped him while he was on his way to work. They did like a roadblock and then they tried to apprehend him, but they killed him in the process. And so they dumped his body off to the side and continued on with the ransom. With the Suzanne case, the kidnapper actually went into the home and got the girl and took her to another building nearby and killed her. And he didn't really go after any money. He just tried to escape, but they caught him. And in the case of Bobby, the kidnappers picked him up after he was let out of school and offered him a ride and got him in the car. And unfortunately, he was killed with the little baby. He was taken out of the hospital. And I believe the exchange of money didn't go through. And then about 10 days later, he was recovered. And the woman was caught. The school bus was on a field trip and they did a similar roadblock and got to the school bus to pull over to the side of the road and ended up kidnapping all of his occupants. And then Frank Jr. was kidnapped from his hotel room. And that's the only ransom note that actually uses strong language about killing the person. To my surprise, all of the other ransom notes use very soft language and the person is okay they're safe don't worry and they use soft language if they're going to kill the person if the person doesn't cooperate with them now i'm going to go over the john bonnet ransom note And then afterwards, I'll go into more general detail. But first, kind of going item by item. So all the other ransom notes start off with, we got them. The John Bonet note starts off with three sentences. Listen carefully. We're a group of individuals, and we respect your business. Then it says, at this time, we have your daughter in our possession and she's safe and unharmed. So that's very much like the other ransom notes except for the first three sentences. Then it talks about the money and goes into that detail. And then again, it goes into more detail or more information. 
It says I advise you to be rested. Now the second page, it goes into great detail about killing John Bonet if their instructions aren't followed. And this is different than the other ransom notes with its graphic nature and so many threats. And they're kind of paranoid that John isn't going to fall along with the ransom note or something. And then the third page, the ransom note gets real personal with John. It's like they think he's arrogant and he's rich and he's going to try to pull something. You're not the only fat cat. Don't think that killing will be difficult. Don't underestimate us. Don't try to grow a brain. They're really worried that he's going to pull something on them. And they don't like him. Now comparing the John Bonet ransom note to the others. It's kind of in line with the others. But if you look at all the others, they seem to be well planned. They had this plan the whole time. And the one that is poorly written and not planned is the one where the person was kidnapped from the house and the kidnapper killed the girl. Where in the John Bonet case, they had to do it on the fly because they went in without paper and pen and such. And they wrote the ransom note supposedly in the house so it seems quite risky or odd that it would be done that way. I mean, if you look at these other ones, they're all several are typed. They're well written out and they're planned out. And so could the John Bonet case, could the kidnapper have planned it out in his head like that and was able to write it all out right there? And then in the John Bonet case, it's wordy. Maybe that's because they're writing it right there in the house. In the other cases, they either have several people involved in the kidnapping or they're pretending that they have an extra person, like the woman with the little baby. And maybe she did have somebody extra. But the other four cases, there's at least two or three people involved in the kidnapping. In my opinion, it seems like the kidnappers wouldn't go through all this plan and to kidnap John Bonet, and she dies, which is odd, but they don't remove her body from the house. That seems ridiculous. So my theory is John killed John Bonet. It was premeditated. He was planning to kill her. He wrote the ransom note at the airport on Christmas Day. And Patsy went out of her mind when she read the ransom note and went downstairs and called 911, which John did not expect. And he's used to high stakes meetings. And so he knew to be cordial and calm or act calm when the police arrived. But his heart was beating hard inside and he was panicking and as the morning progressed he finally started to break down with panic because he knew his older kids were going to show up at the house that morning and he didn't know what to do he was trapped and that's why he went and found her body at one o'clock Well, this ends this episode of Unsolved. And the next episode about this case will probably be more following up on it with more of an argument if this is a real ransom or it was a phony ransom note. So I'll see you the next time.